Um, not really. Why? What's up? Sure, uh, what time were you thinking? Yep, I'm ready. You guys can come by whenever. <laughs> yeah, I got food here. Just come. I'm sure I can figure something out. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Stasia and I'm following a high carb, low fat, no oil, plant-based diet called the starch solution by Dr. John McDougall. So if you want to learn more about my plant-based diet and why I chose to eat this way, be sure to check out my first video, which I will post the link in the description box below. A lot of people are asking, are you on Instagram yet? <laughs> Not yet, but that is coming. So for now, be sure to join our Facebook group. There's lots of good discussion happening there. I will post the link in the description box below for that as well. Okay. So let's talk about the weekends for a second. For some, including myself, weekends can tend to get a little bit busier and a little bit more social. I think that most of us could agree that there's some kind of universal, like, let's let loose type of vibe that's associated after a long week of work or other responsibilities all week long. That when the weekend hits, we just want to forget it all. So I have good news. Eating a high carb, low fat, plant-based diet you can still treat yourself to some very exciting and delicious comfort and social foods. You should never have to feel like you're missing out on anything. And what's even better is that it won't even look or feel like you're on a plant-based weight loss journey. I think that because this is a lifestyle versus a fad diet, it's super important to find those foods that really, really excite you. So today I'm going to be showing you mine. So with all the meals I'm going to show you, not only will you enjoy them, but they are actually perfect when serving friends and family. Planning ahead and providing healthy options for yourself when you know that temptation might be a little bit stronger, like on the weekends or at social functions, is the key to keeping up with consistency. Guys, it is very possible to not feel deprived eating this way. So let's get to it. Okay, so I am actually so excited to share this one with you guys. If you love strawberries and you love mint, you are going to love this drink. All you need are strawberries, two limes, a bunch of mint, sparkling water. Today we're going to be using strawberry flavored and some brown sugar and crushed ice. You can either buy crushed ice at the store or just crush it yourself if you have a high speed blender. It should look a little something like this, although this was a little too crushed, so a little less would be fine. If you are unable to use crushed ice, regular ice cubes will work as well. So as much as I would love to take the credit for this recipe, I have to give it to my handsome husband. Hey honey. He surprised me with this drink one night and assured me it was starch solution approved and I knew I just had to share. So you're just going to start off by cutting the limes in half and then cutting them into quarters. So you should end up with about eight pieces of lime. Next, you'll see my husband just shaving off a couple of slices of the lime. Those pieces are just for garnish afterwards. Next, you're going to throw about 10 to 12 mint leaves into your glass, followed by about three or four sliced strawberries. We are using fresh organic ones, but he said that even frozen defrosted ones would work as well. So again, he's using about a tablespoon of brown sugar here, but if you're watching your sugar, you can always decrease that amount. And keep in mind, this is not a drink for every day, just for special occasions. So here you're going to see him just crushing everything down in the glass. He's using a part of our juicer just to crush it all down, but he said even a fork or spoon will work just fine. After your ingredients are mixed together, it's time to add the crushed ice. You basically want to fill the ice to the top of the glass. It's already looking fresh, let's keep going. So as I mentioned before, we're using the strawberry flavored Perrier sparkling water. But if you can't find the strawberry flavor, the unflavored one will work just fine. So all you want to do is top off whatever's left of the glass with the Perrier sparkling water. I should also mention that any brand of sparkling water should work just fine. 
Okay, so one of the final steps left, my husband asked me to make it very clear how to mix this. He said you want to mix it from the bottom and work your way up. He said to not mix it in a circular motion or you will ruin the whole presentation of the glass. So in a nutshell, you want to gently mix all the ingredients here and try your best to keep the ice still sitting on top. Here he is adding just a few more strawberry slices for both added flavor and presentation. My husband is an excellent cook and he always tells me we eat with our eyes so it's important for our food to look good. So he is going to do just that with these final last touches. To garnish the glass, all you have to do is put a small slit in a slice of lime and strawberry to fit perfectly on the rim of your glass. Top it off with a mint leaf and there you go. You have a delicious non-alcoholic strawberry mojito. I cannot stress it enough how delicious this drink is. With the holidays approaching, you do not have to feel like you are missing out on anything if you have this in your hand. I know we are living in crazy times with COVID and all, but if you are still seeing any friends or family, you will definitely impress them with this one. But you don't have to wait for friends and family, you can treat yourself. So if you haven't heard about chocolate hummus, let me be the first one to tell you about it. All you need are black beans, white kidney beans, baking cocoa powder, dates, vanilla, and PB and me. Now, the PB and me is optional in this recipe, but it does make it very delicious. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's a powdered peanut butter where they've removed most of the fat. If you would like to try it, there will be an Amazon link in the description box below. All right, so we are going to start by adding a half a cup of black beans to the blender. Next, we're going to add half a cup of white kidney beans to the blender. Chocolate! <laughs> now we're gonna add three tablespoons of any unsweetened cocoa powder. And my personal favorite, vanilla extract. You wanna add one teaspoon. In my recipe, I'm using five dates to sweeten it, but you can always try swapping that out for a sweetener of your choice. I'm sure maple syrup or brown sugar would work just fine. I have made this recipe both with and without PB and me, and I find that I really enjoy it with it. So I just use one tablespoon of PB and me. And I completely forgot to mention that we do need about a quarter cup of unsweetened vanilla plant-based milk. You want the consistency to be a little bit on the thick side and as smooth as you can possibly get it. This stuff is seriously good enough to eat straight off the spoon, but we're gonna keep things classy and I'll show you how to make a chocolate hummus platter. So these are just some of my favorite foods that I feel pair well with the chocolate hummus, but of course, feel free to use whatever you like or have on hand. But let me just throw this out here. The banana slices and this chocolate hummus, ooh, it is so, so good. And for a treat, if you wanna add a little bit of crunch, these rice cakes are made with one ingredient, whole grain brown rice, and have zero grams of fat in it. So all I did was just cut them up into bite-sized triangle pieces, and you could also use plain rice crackers instead. Okay, so I try to limit my bread to only two to three times a week, but this right here is my absolute favorite. It is an organic, whole grain sprouted bread that only has one gram of fat per slice. All I did was toast one slice and then cut it up into bite-sized pieces. This platter was so delicious that my kids actually devoured the whole thing when I was done making it. It makes this mama so happy to see them enjoy not only delicious food, but healthy food. Again, these are some of my favorite foods or foods that I had on hand, but feel free to mix it up and try your own. Even for our non-plant-based friends and family, I'm sure that if you set out this chocolate hummus platter, it will not last long. So from mojito to chocolate, now we're jumping on to pizza. For our pizza crust, I'm going to be using a low-fat, no-oil, whole wheat pita. I find these pitas at any of my local grocery stores. I always just double check that they are oil-free. For my pita pizza, I'm just going to be using a regular tomato sauce, but if you have an oil-free pizza sauce or pasta sauce that you would like to use in its place, feel free to do that. So I just start by covering the pita in the tomato sauce. You don't wanna to add too much or too little, just enough to have it nicely covered. Because I'm using just a regular tomato sauce, I'm just going to put a couple pinches of brown sugar just to offset the acidity of the tomatoes. 
I love me some fresh basil, so I just washed and chopped about three or four leaves and put them on the pita. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of chopped onion to give this pita some much deserved flavor. And what would a pizza be without a little bit of fresh garlic? If you guys watched my last video about meal prepping with me, these broccoli pieces are from that meal prep, chopped and ready to go. Okay, so next we're going to add some colored bell peppers. You can use any bell pepper you want. Today, I decided to use some red and yellow bell pepper just to add some beautiful color. Okay, so this is where we get divided. If you love pineapple on your pizza, then feel free to add some on. And if you don't, then just skip this part. I know pineapple on pizza is the great debate, but not today. <laughs> some of you know how much I love my olives, and to me, a pizza is not a pizza without some. So I just simply chopped up five green olives and spread them out on the pita pizza. Now that I'm done adding my vegetables, I'm just going to top it off by adding a little bit of oregano and a little bit of garlic salt. If you're watching your salt, you can just swap it out by using some garlic powder. And lastly, my three ingredient cheese sauce. If you haven't seen the recipe for that yet, I will post the link in the description below. This cheese sauce naturally thickens up a little bit after being in the refrigerator. So all you have to do is warm it up in the microwave and add just a little bit of water to get that nice smooth consistency. And then I think you can take it from here. All we're going to do is drizzle that cheese all over that pizza. After putting the cheese on the pizza, the very last thing I like to do is sprinkle a little bit of extra oregano on top. I cooked it in the oven for about 15 minutes on 375 and look at this beauty. It looks good enough to share and that's exactly what we're going to do. You can use a pizza cutter or a pair of scissors to cut some nice sized triangle pieces. I just added a little bit of sriracha in the middle there, but you can feel free to add whatever dips you like. This dish makes for a beautiful appetizer or a meal for one. I gotta always point it out at least once in my videos. Can you believe that we get to eat like this? So, so amazing. All right, so maybe when you thought it just couldn't get any better, it can. We are about to make some potato chips. All we need to make these is parchment paper. I'm using two potatoes, but that can be adjusted if you would like more or less and just a little bit of salt. So all we are going to do is slice these potatoes as thin as we possibly can. If you have a mandolin, use that. It will work even better. Just watch those fingers. Okay, so after we're done cutting them, you just wanna soak them in very cold water for about five minutes just to remove some of that starch. I find that by doing this, it just makes them a little bit crunchier. After you've drained the water, you just wanna lay them flat on a piece of paper towel to absorb any of the extra water. I take a second sheet of paper towel and cover the potato slices and press firmly down just to absorb any remaining moisture. Once they are nice and dry, they are ready to turn into potato chips. So remember that parchment paper? This is where we're going to use it. You want to place a piece of parchment paper over a microwave safe plate. Then you want to spread the potato slices apart from one another, otherwise they will stick. Everyone's microwave will vary, but for me, I put them in the microwave for about five minutes until they were brown. I turn them over once and put them in for about another three minutes. You will know that they are ready when they are slightly browned and about 70% crispy. They will harden up as they cool down. Can I just tell you that these chips are amazing? I promise you, you will not miss the store-bought chips when you try these. Have fun seasoning these. You could try salt and vinegar, dill pickle, a little bit of garlic salt. Seriously, so many options. But the crunch, wait for it. <laughs> I just had to prove to you guys how similar these are to the store-bought chips. Still don't believe me? Okay, okay, I'm done. But honestly, these are a game changer. They would also pair beautifully with many different dips. You could do hummus. I'm using salsa and hot sauce, any type of bean dip. They are amazing. These are the kind of chips that you can snack away on totally guilt-free. So next time you might be tempted to buy some chips, now you know you can just make your own. Speaking of chips, it's nacho time. So for these chips, we're going to be using oil-free corn tortillas and our toppings are going to be hot peppers, green onion, regular onion, 
yellow and red pepper, and some black beans. But again, you can top them however you like. So all I am doing here is cutting the tortilla shells into bite-sized triangular pieces. I wanted to see first how many tortillas I would need, so I decided to layer it in the pan before putting it in my air fryer. You could also bake them right in the oven, I just prefer using the air fryer because it's faster and they always turn out exactly how I like them. So after about 6 or 7 minutes in the air fryer, they were nice and crisp and ready to be covered in cheese. Again, here is my 3 ingredient cheese sauce. I told you guys I need to batch cook this every week because there's just so many recipes I use it for. And just like the pita pizza recipe, I warmed up the cheese a little bit before using it. Okay, so now we're ready to cover these bad boys in whatever vegetables you love. If I wasn't making a video while making these ones, my kids would be doing this part. They love helping their mama. Now, in my case, because I already pre-cooked the corn chips in my air fryer, I only need to put these in the oven for about 6 to 7 minutes just to warm up the other ingredients. That's all there is to it and you have yourself some healthy corn chip nachos. I like to add a little bit of the cheese sauce on the side just for extra dipping, along with some salsa, hot sauce, olives, pickles. Look at that gorgeous colorful plate. And as a side note, I do love my olives, but I also have control over them. So don't worry, I did not devour that whole bowl to myself. <laughs> okay guys, so there you have it. Some beautiful, beautiful food. So I hope I have proven that just because we're following a whole food plant-based lifestyle does not mean you have to feel deprived or left out. I wouldn't be surprised if others get inspired when they see you eating food like this. Okay, so it's not a weekend, but I have two of my favorite things here. Who's keeping track anyways, right? So those were some of my go-to meals that not only I look forward to eating, but I also look forward to sharing with my friends and family. For me, I'm a social eater, so it's very easy for me to devour like a whole bowl or plate of food while talking and hanging out without even realizing it. So for me, it's very important to have something healthy to munch on to help me stay on track. Oh, it's getting a lot of sun. <laughs> so I hope that these meals inspire you to find your favorite go-to meals for the weekend or at your next get together with your friends and family. So if you'd like to follow along my plant-based weight loss journey and get all my tips and tricks that I'm learning along the way, then be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, okay, bye Ollie.